Welcome to Stargate SG-1 for the first time. Still not a Star Trek podcast. My name is Jeff Aiken and I am watching Stargate SG-1 for the first time. And I'm Brent Allen and I'm watching Stargate SG-1 for the 47th time. But for the first time, I am looking for those Star Trek-like sci-fi messages. You know, those things that tell us... uh, mirrors to society yeah they tell us how we can be better human beings to each other they give us a hope for the future so now that you know what we're doing let's get right to it we're going to be watching solitudes i like the speed of how we're zipping into we're just getting into this i'm eager i am eager to get to so a lot of times we've we've, slow your roll pull your expectations back son right we've often for like babylon 5 we watch the show. We dissect the show. We analyze the show. It's great. I love doing it, Yeah. but it's also, I get so eager to just hit go on the next episode. So let's do that. Yeah. We're watching solitudes. Brent, tell us about this one. Yeah. So, uh, this is episode 18 solitudes, original air date, February 6th, 1998. Wow. Rolling right along. Uh, this show is written by show creator, Brad Wright. Mm -hmm. All right. So not, not bad writing credits there. Right. Also, the show is directed by Martin Wood. Stargate SG-1 fans out there should recognize the name Martin Wood. Martin Wood is a name you're going to want to know, Jeff. He's going to be around for a long time, like to the tune of 75 episodes. Wow. He's also going to become a producer on the show. Uh, He's going to be very, very involved uh, with that. You're also going to meet a new guy on screen today for the first time, Sergeant Siler. Siler. Sergeant Siler is going to be like the chief of maintenance around the SGC. Okay. Sergeant Siler is um, played by a guy named Dan Shea. There was an episode in Babylon 5 where, like, I rewound it because I could have sworn that it was Dan Shea who was playing this particular part. Dan Shea is actually the stunt coordinator on SG-1. Really? Yeah, like, he's, but he appears as this. That's there cool. Is, there is an inside joke, and I don't know if they do it in this episode, so I'm going to be looking for it. But there's an inside joke that usually with Sergeant Siler, Martin Wood, the director, makes a cameo. And they have this big honking huge wrench just for no reason. Right. Like it, it's, it's like, it's like look for it in the background. So I'm going to see if it's star. I don't know when that particular inside. It's like the 47 joke in star Trek. It's they just, just sort of slip it in big old know? wrench. Yeah. Yeah. Just a big old silver wrench, but it's, it's, it's Sergeant Siler. And then this shorter, darker haired dude. Okay. Hanging out with him. Cool. So we'll, we'll see if it. we can't find it uh, for that. So, yeah, with that, uh, let's go ahead and jump on in to today's episode. If you guys are just joining us, because every episode is somebody's first one, here's how this is going to work. We're going to go watch this episode right now. Like, we're not going to go away and watch it and take some notes and maybe watch it a second time and digest it and spend some time with the family, and then we're going to reschedule time to come back. No, no, no. We're going to watch it right now. And if you're joining us on Patreon or YouTube, you're going to get the reaction video of Jeff and I watching this episode. Jeff, for the first time, me for the first time looking for the messages. And uh, if you want the full unedited version, that version is the Patreon version. So make sure you head over to patreon.com slash Babylon five first or check the link below for updated URLs at any point that address could change. And if you're one of our incredible listeners that has a podcast app open right now, we're about to jump forward in time. We're going to join you here in a few seconds after we've watched the episode. And when we come back, I'm going to share my for the first time reactions. And Brent will dive into any of the sci-fi messages that he found in Solitudes. Brent, let's start this thing. I like it. Seven, locked. <laughs> Have you ever taken the subway with friends and gotten off at your stop, but the rest of your crew didn't? Well, that's how this one starts. Daniel and Tilt come busting through, but no Sam or Jack, and everybody's confused. Now, you'd think something awful happened to them, and you'd be kind of right. I mean, they're still alive, but they're stuck in some icy cave that's probably just a little south of the Fortress of Solitude which is really kind of good news. When you break a bone, one of the first things you can do is put it on ice. And Jack, well, Jack broke his leg and a rib. So at least they're getting iced or something. Of course, we know this, you and I know this, but the the crew at the SGC do not. 
They're investigating a surge of energy that happened when they gated through. Right now, they think all the staff blasts from the Jaffa they were running from might have caused the surge. Either way, Jack and Sam are likely somewhere between eh, here and eternity. So Hammond does what he has to do and officially declares them M.I.A. Daniel's not about to give up, though, and remembers that here is included in between here and eternity. He postulates that there might be a second Stargate on Earth, and the energy surge may have split them off to that one. Now that Jack and Sam are from the land of ice and snow, near the midnight sun with no hot springs to flow, they're doing their best to investigate the area. They find the DHD for the Stargate they came through and try phoning home, but no dice. Continuing to explore, Sam finds that there is nothing but frozen tundra as far as the eye can see. So, hmm, probably not Earth. Jack's starting to fade, and he has some pretty vulnerable and human moments with Sam. Back home, though, Daniel keeps working. He finds seismic activity at the exact moment of the stargating down in Antarctica. Having nothing to lose, they send a team down south, and lo and behold, there they are. SG-1 is reunited, Sam and Jack are safe, and turns out, Earth's got two stargates. Jeff, you've just watched uh, Solitudes for the first time. I would just like to point out, I, I'm seeing your notes. I, I'm not reading them right now, but just you had significantly more notes for the episode Singularity mm -hmm. than you do for this episode Solitudes. Yeah. So take us through it. What is your first time reaction to Solitudes? I would love to say that I have less notes here because I've become so much more efficient at my note taking. Yes. The reality is I have very few notes because nothing happened in this episode. This episode tried so hard mm -hmm. to build tension and high drama, right? Jack, Jack is broken. He's bleeding internally. He's going to die. Mm -hmm. There's their save. Their, the thing to save them is right there. There's the DHD. There's the Stargate. Sam can't figure it out. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? You got Daniel trying to solve the mystery with just breadcrumbs of information at this point. But at no point was I ever actually worried that anything bad was going to happen. How could you be when you know that they're on the DVD cover? Exactly. Yeah. And I don't know if it's just a product of knowing that this series goes on for so many more seasons. I don't yeah. know what it would have been like watching it for the first time, but I think a lot of sci-fi, you know, Voyager did this enterprise did this a bunch Yeah, uh, where it's like, Hey, they're in. So the main people are in so much danger. What's going to happen. What's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Well, it's how they get out of it. And that, yeah. And I think the mystery in this one was interesting. And I thought that here's the positive in the whole thing. And we hit it just near the end. Literally, you're like, hey, what are your theories? And I'm like, well, this Stargate, that's the thing. Like, it's doing something with the energy and some weird thing. And then Sam starts executing plan B where she's going to climb out. And I was like, what if there's just another Stargate on Earth? And they're on Earth. We never, there's no rule that there can only be one. And then like 14 seconds later, Daniel was like, there's another Stargate on Earth. Right, right. <laughs> and they start looking. Turns out they're on in, in, in our, in Turns out they're in Antarctica. Yeah. So, I mean, it was cool. Like, the writing was excellent. It took you right along at the exact moment. The timing was really good. The character stuff between Jack and Sam was heartfelt. Mm -hmm. A lot of high, high points for Jack, just cracking wise to the very end, really showing his leadership skills in a, in a really big way. But maybe, I don't know. Like, I, I want to I say what my favorite thing was. It's either the timing of the mystery or the fact that it took her over 12 hours to realize she just needed to turn the thing off and on again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I wish I had more to say on this one. Yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a, a high drama, tried to be a high drama episode. There was uh, not character development, but character bonding yeah, yeah. that kind of occurred. We got a little more insight into the relationship with Jack and his ex-wife, Sarah, which was really, was, which was cool. I mm. said in there too, that, that, I'm really fascinated by their relationship mm. between cold Lazarus and this, like both of them obviously really care about each other still. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be a good, you know, married couple or that they could get back together or, or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see just how that relationship develops for us. And we get to kind of see more of it, but I would just say, don't hold your breath on that one. Oh, 
<laughs> Sorry. Yeah, not, not to pour water on that one, but. Uh, that's fair. Because I, I, I would have been holding out for it. Yeah. Because I think it's an interesting concept yeah. that TV doesn't take into too often. I think TV most often either completely dismisses any tension between a separated couple or they hate each other. Mm. But to have one where it's like actually like, hey, we still really care about each other. Yeah. And we're still going to continue some form of a relationship would be really interesting. Mm. But probably not what's going to happen here is what I'm hearing. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure some people are upset. Those are my first time reactions, but um, I'm nervous about getting to the ranking. But my initial just right talking through it right now reaction was, hey, it was a fine episode. I don't think it achieved exactly what it was trying to. What about you? Did you get any sci-fi messages out of this one? You know, um, nothing that I think the episode was trying to tell us. Yeah. Like this was, uh, I'm going to push back on you. I think this was a high drama episode. Yeah. I think we can agree or disagree on whether or not it, it successfully achieved that high drama, but I do think it was a high drama. I think uh, there is a lot of, I think we see a lot more of the personal growth between Jack and Sam. Mm -hmm. I think we see once again, uh, a furthering of exactly how much the four members of SG one mean to each other. Yeah, uh, we saw that back in Fire and Water when we thought that Daniel was dead, and the three were just like freaking out over the whole thing. The mystery of I love the mystery of it. Like when you said, I don't know what I love more. I, it's it's the mystery. It's yeah. the what is going on. What is going on? They unveiled just enough at just the right time and just the right way. In the right, I mean, I think the writing was fantastic, and this Brad Wright did a phenomenal job. And uh, it, as you understood the truth. In the exact moment you were supposed to catch, right? It. That's pretty and amazing. I think you did so good with that. Uh, I was really happy to see you catch that. Like I didn't feel slighted at all. Um, I'm just really glad that you caught that uh, at th- at the right time. Like, exactly. If you would have said it earlier on, like, oh, they're in Antarctica. Oh my gosh! Like you still were like, oh, they're in the North Pole, and no, actually they're on the other right. side. Right. But as far as chevrons, I mean, you could pull stuff out. You always got to maintain hope. As long as mm-hmm. you have hope, you can survive. Uh, never give up. You, that's not the point of this show. This was, uh, I think, furthering an idea. There's more than one Stargate. Yeah. And again, the ghoul did not build the Stargate system. And there's more going on than what we have ever, ever thought possible before. And yeah, now there's a second Stargate on Earth where the apparently the uh, the seventh Chevron is not one that we have ever seen before. Also, what you realize and. I would think that a, a culture is advanced that can build the Stargate system. There would be a specific spot on every DHD, which is the seventh Chevron, right? Yeah. Not, Oh, look for the one that you haven't seen before that and try to figure it out. Like, yeah. be it, Nope, this is it right here. And then find the rest of them. But apparently they didn't do that. So whatever, uh, zero Chevrons for me, unfortunately, but I, I, I will remind people who are freaking out right now, who love this episode, like me, Chevrons have absolutely nothing to do with how much we enjoyed the episode. Jeff, you get to put this episode into its enjoyment factor. Before you do that, I would like to show you one thing. Okay. It is, uh, you know, shows have outtakes. Yeah. Shows have special features on the DVD. I would like to show you what is potentially Brent's personal favorite outtake almost anywhere of any show ever wow okay and it's from this episode okay so we're going to take a moment to watch that and uh hopefully the audio podcast at least gets to listen to this the entire way through so just to set the scene they're on top of the dhd trying to dig it out okay that's where they are right this is she's got she's the like, ice pick mm-hmm. yeah, yeah 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 all right and uh the voice you are about to hear is the director martin wood Ow. i remember the biggest one that i set up was the very first show i directed where we were chipping away at the ice in one of O'Neill's lines is, I don't know what to do. And she just looks at him and goes, We spent seven years on MacGyver and you can't figure this one out? <laughs> we, we got belt buckles and shoelaces and a piece of gum? Build a nuclear reactor for crying out loud. <laughs> you used to be MacGyver, McGadget, McGimmick. Now you're Mr. McUseless. <laughs> you're God. <laughs> Stuck on a glacier with MacGyver! <laughs> she spent real time figuring that one. I oh, keep, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And that, that was set up by the director to do that. Like that's, <laughs> that's good stuff. 
Uh, Jeff, so the question comes to you. How much did you enjoy the episode? Uh, you have often surprised me with your rankings. I have a feeling you may surprise me again. Our top five currently on the SG1, season one, 100% completely accurate. First time watchers ranking is number one is Torment of Tantalus. Two is The Knox. Three, correctly, is Endgame. Enigma. Uh, uh, I, thank you. Yeah. Enigma. I'm I'm looking far away to have my glasses on. Uh, four is Cole Lazarus. Five is Korai. Uh, and then we got Brief Candle, Bloodlines, Broken Divide, Children of God, Stores Hammer, Singularity. Jeff, where do you place uh, this one? Solitudes. It's very clear to me what you think of this episode. Uh, I imagine a lot of the community probably feels close to the same. Yes. I'm going to say that I'm going to, I'm going to invoke a name that many people here listening have heard a couple times. And that is Matt. Yes. From the beam me up podcast, right? Great yes. podcast. Yes. Actually. I mean, for, I hear that's a good show for real. I've like, never listened but I hear it's a great show. Never listened, but you only did it. Beam me all. up a star Trek podcast. Yeah. Which seriously, the most unique way anyone has done a watch through the whole gamut of up to, you know, nineties, nineties Trek. Check it out. Brent's co-host, Matt. Link down below in the show notes, if we remember. Yeah. But he literally all but crapped on the sacred cows of Star Trek. City on the Edge of Forever. Yeah. Duet. Yep. The Visitor. Yep. Right? These just hallmark episodes. He's yep. like, eh. Yeah. I didn't get it. And you and I have talked about this a lot where we have the benefit of having watched all of Star Trek. Yeah. Just the other day, we were talking about City on the Edge of Forever. And the reason that's such a great episode now Honestly, it isn't, but the, when, when, <laughs> the knives are coming out, Jeff. it just, it, it doesn't hold up. It doesn't hold up. Yeah. Go watch it. It doesn't. Yeah. But what saves it is we know what Kirk, Spock and McCoy become and to see them in this point. It's amazing. It's awesome. Yeah. And the time and you don't know stuff. It's like, yeah, I don't know for, for, well, for our star Trek people, I would even go to duet. Duet's the one that always sticks out in my mind when I think about this one, because duets just, it, it's objectively it's a, it's a great a, episode, right? It's, End of season one, Deep Space Nine. It's Kira Norris and uh, the judge from Ghostbusters two in a room talking, and it's a phenomenal episode. The, it's acting, it's writing, it's pacing. That episode, I think, only truly works when you're thinking of season seven, Kira Norris, yeah. not season one, Kira Norris. And when Matt met met Kira and watched that episode, he only knew of season one, Kira Norris. I think you and I, Jeff, are experiencing similar things with Babylon 5, mm. particularly in the earlier seasons, season one, season two, even a little bit of season three. People are thinking season five yeah. of Anova and Sheridan and Londo and Jakar, and we haven't got there yet for those characters. Yeah, yeah I, I've been in recent the time we're recording this. I've been getting flayed alive. And rightly so. For my opinion on one character. Yes. Which I don't think is rightly so. I think I'm cor my no. opinion is what, correct. What's actually, what's actually really been funny, Jeff, is uh, watching it. Uh, so many people just, as you say, flaying you alive. And then, like, within a couple of episodes, they're like, actually, I kind of agree. Right? Actually, he's got a good point. <laughs> yeah. It, but it, there's, there's just. Jeff's like, vindication. Exactly. It feels so good. <laughs> but I, I, I just bring all that up. And, and, and I appreciate the time on the rabbit hole because. Where I'm going to put it is going to upset some people. Yes. I just want to put that out there. Yes. It's not me saying this is a bad episode. Uh. I'm also acknowledging that there's going to come a time I'm going to watch this again, and I'm probably going to be like, I can't believe I put it there. Like, yeah. oh, my gosh, this was great. But right As you now, did with – see, I'm just holding – you can place this anywhere because I know within less than 24 hours, you incorrectly placed Enigma, and then you put it where it should belong. It did. So – Go ahead. Where are you going to put it? I don't see that happening with this one. I'm That's just going to okay. be really honest. I'm going be... to send you back to your hotel tonight and make you watch this again on your own. You need to watch this until you change your <laughs> mind. <laughs> so here's the deal. Yeah. I'm going to put it where it's going. Okay. Feel free to at me. I don't care. This uh, at Jeff Aiken at Stargate SG one. Right. <laughs> FTFT dot com. Yeah. Uh, Brent, this is going to be our new number 11 right under Thor's hammer under Thor's hammer above singularity. Um, you play, we talked about last time when we did singularity, there's this line of divide between the good episodes and the bad episodes. Yep. Uh, and you said singularity was in the good episodes, but down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So you're placing this in the good episodes just above the last good episode. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. And, and, and I'll tell you, 
I struggled with above or below singularity mm. on where it landed. I, I mean, I'm just going to say here, I'm looking at it right now. You have broken divide children of the gods, Thor's hammer and solitudes for Brent. Brent would say that's a pretty good run of episodes right there. Yeah. So I don't think it's bad. Yeah. Like I agree. And it was, it's still there, right? Yeah. It's, there, there are literally what there are literally one, two, three, there are five episodes Yeah. out of the 17 that we've done five that are like, yeah, those are not good episodes. Everything above it. Good episode. So I'm going to point this out. Rate SG one's season. You're not Ooh. even to, you're not even to the end of the season yet, but at this point rate SG one season one compared to TNG season one, Voyager season one, deep space nine season one and uh, Babylon five season one battle start like uh, compared to any other season ones. Like I'm not going to compare it to, ba- to Battlestar Galactica because that, that one gets uh, weird because there was the mini series and there was a first season uh, and some stuff happened. Yeah. But TNG, terrible first season. Deep Space Nine, mostly terrible first season. Yep. Voyager, decent first season. Yeah. Great pilot. The first Star Trek pilot that was like, ooh, really yeah, good. that's yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, Enterprise, great pilot. Decent first season. Yeah. Babylon 5, best first season in 90s sci-fi that I can think of. Okay. Until maybe this moment. So far, 17 episodes. We've got four more. Right? Because the first two were two. Yeah. Or the first one was two. There's five, only five episodes that I'm like, I that you're like, I could care less about these episodes ever again. And I wouldn't say looking at those five, uh, two of them, fire and water and enemy within aren't horrible. Aren't awful. I just don't want to watch them that yeah. often. All right. Well, uh, with that, Jeff has ranked the episode. Uh, and you know, the thing, the weird thing about rankings is every episode has to go somewhere. Mm hmm. And it doesn't, even if it's at the bottom, doesn't mean you didn't like it. Exactly. It just means in the order, that's where you would prefer to see it again. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'm sure within 24 hours, Jeff will watch it because your homework is to go home and watch this episode again and again until you raise that up to its proper level. Yeah, we'll see what happens. (laughs) I'm sure you're going to do that. Well, that's it for uh, Solitudes. Jeff, next time we are watching an episode called, remember I talked to you about the uh, Wizard of Oz references? Yeah. Yeah. Tin Man. Tin Man. Venture a guess. What is Tin Man? I'm not saying that has anything to do with Wizards of, Wizard of Oz. It just Tin Man the name is there. Well, there's the we go, we go down that Wizard of Oz path. Something about heart, right? Maybe something about oil, oil can, oil can. But I'm going to go out on a huge limb on this one. Ooh, I like when you go out on limbs because they're often be fun. funny. Somehow, maybe, maybe, maybe we're going to spend time on a Gould ship. Mm. We're going to be in space and in space, we are going to discover a life form. We've never, ever thought of before. Let's say a life form. They're going to call a, I don't know, maybe something like a, a gom two is what they might call that. A gom two. Yeah. And, uh, what they're going to find, they're going to, they're going to see the same. Nothing. It's a creature. They're going to think it's another ship and try and board it. And they'll be able to, they'll be able to walk through, but then they're going to realize it's actually a living creature. And it's going to like, you have these devastating waves that it spins around and, and destroys ships with. Okay. That's um, that is the star Trek, the next generation episode, Tin man. I have nothing I, else. I was catching that. Okay, good. It's like, mm. yeah. uh, well, we yeah. will see. Uh, it has nothing to do with that. Uh, <laughs> we'll see right here next time on S G one for the first time. Thank you guys so much for joining us and hanging out with us. Whether you're uh, doing the rewatch with us, doing the, the, the reaction video, um, or just listening to us on the podcast. You guys are amazing. You're awesome. Hey, wherever you are, please like subscribe, share with a friend who needs to know all about Stargate SG one, join Jeff on his first watch or join me as we do the deep dive into actually looking for the messages that Stargate is trying to tell. I think we've come up with some really, we're, we're seeing that Stargate is beyond just telling a good story is actually trying to say something yeah. as well, which I, I very much appreciate. Uh, for that, especially, you know, from us hoity toity Star Trek guys for real. who just lorded over of what makes Star Trek so well, we're a morality play. Uh, but we also do some good sci fi. So, right. I think it's what we're finding here with Stargate SG1. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, really appreciate you guys. We will see you next time. And until then, my name's Whoa. Brian. Whoa. Sorry about that. It's cool. It's cool. That was just my sidearm. I swear. I swear. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh.